back to my channel, Fluid Family. If you are new here, go ahead and hit subscribe. If you are returning, thank you for joining me again for another Fluid Acrylic Paint Pouring video. Today, I am going to be working on a 10 by 20 inch, which is the same size canvas there, a 10 by 20 inch canvas, a gallery wrapped canvas, and I'm going to be doing the open cup technique. Okay, I moved you guys from over there to here and set up. And here I just have about four ounces of, nah, probably about two to three ounces of Liquitex titanium white and about two to three ounces of Floetrol because at the last minute I decided that I wanted to add white to my color palette for the open cup. So I'm just mixing these two together really well. Make sure you scrape the sides and the bottom of the cup while you're mixing. And then scrape your craft stick off and mix that back in with the other paint. Okay. Now, I'm gonna set this to the side. So I'm gonna be using titanium white. cleaning off the <laughs> craft stick. This is an Opera Rose by Windsor & Newton mixed with Rose Quartz by Deco Art Extreme Sheen. Here I have Aqua, Aqua Marine by Deco Art Extreme Sheen. This is just Sapphire um, by Deco Art Extreme Sheen. This is Iridescent Silver by Pebio mixed with Deco Art Extreme Sheen Silver. And this is um, Lamp Black mixed with Titanium White and a little bit of Neutral Gray by Liquitex. So those are the colors I'll be using for this open cup. Now I have this cup here and this X-Acto knife to cut my cup for the open cup. <laughs> but <clears throat> what I noticed the last time that I did this is the plastic cups, um, I think, I believe these are 18 ounce cups, hefty cups. But if you use this rim here, this is much thicker and um, heavier. It's one of the heavier sides of the cup. So I wouldn't recommend using this end, like to say if I was to cut here and then use this half of it because it's going to sink into your paint and you kind of want it to sit right on top of the surface of the paint. You don't want it to sink in and disrupt your base color. So I'm going to <laughs> carefully as, as I can with this very sharp knife just go ahead and cut this cup. Now, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. The first time that I did this, I was trying to get like a perfect circle. Something that is open on both sides so that you can pour paint into and it can come out the other side, right? Now, I just wanna cut probably about here so that I can use the lighter part of this cup to sit right on the surface of the paint. Um, I'm a little nervous <laughs> holding this up like that. So I just kind of want to make a slit through and then cut this way. Make sure I'm cutting away from my fingers here <laughs> so that I do not cut myself. I don't necessarily know if, if it matters that this is straight or not, right? I don't I don't know because it's not going to be 
straight. See, this is absolutely not straight. And you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to use it that way because, because it is a little wavy, paint will be flowing out from underneath as I pour into the open cup. Paint will spill out on the sides there and hey, you never know, it could give me some cool effects. Okay, so let's set that to the side. Actually, I'll take it over here. And now I'm gonna um, just layer down my base color. And I'm going to spread it out some. So this also helps so that I don't have to stretch it out. Uh oh, I necessarily wanted to go over the side, but I'm just trying to tilt off of my spinner. So I just, this will help so I don't have to stretch it out as much. There are a ton of air bubbles because I just mixed up this paint. So I'm going to do this for a few more seconds to continue popping those air bubbles. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started because I don't want to leave the paint sitting on the canvas for too long. I'm going to gently place this about here. I'm going to pour my paints right into this open cup here. I think I'm going to start with the upper rows. I know I don't need a lot of paint uh -oh, because I only want to do it in the center. that white is just a tad bit too thick so I may not use it again and you see how it's coming out on the side there so I feel like it's kind of a good thing that there is holes there because you see it spewing out on the side. Now I'm going to start to gently swirl this down the center because I don't want too much paint. Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't think this was a good idea. <laughs> I can't necessarily pick up. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Hey, what are you gonna do, you know? <laughs> this is only my second open cup, and I'm getting some really cool reaction here, so <laughs> I'm gonna say not too shabby. Uh oh. It's just that it's not going all the way. And I was trying to <laughs> still use it. But okay, we got some cool reactionary. I want to say not too shabby. <laughs> not too shabby. Let's keep letting this produce. There's a bunch of lacing and cells going on. So I'm just going to let that. Actually, I'm going to tilt it out some in each direction. Oh, yeah, that's, that's some pretty cells there. Mm, I actually really like this color palette. I don't know, I think 
think I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out. <laughs> I'm just getting so, so many cool reactions. Okay, this is what we are working with, you know? And I like, I like. Still got some really cool cell, some really cool cell reaction. I'm just touching up my sides right now, which I really don't like doing. I just like for the paint to reach over the edge. <laughs> I don't necessarily like touching up my sides, but like I just don't like the padding. I'm touching up. And it's rather for the paint to reach all the way over the sides. I don't have to touch them at all. This is so cool. Like, do you? I'm gonna take you guys down and show you the <laughs> cell reaction and the multicolor cells that I got, I mean, it's so cool. I love this color palette. The aquamarine kind of took over, but I'm still okay with the result of it because I can see the other colors coming through as well. But I'm gonna give this a quick blow with my hot air gun. Yeah, because I just mixed up the base color and there is a lot of air levels. I just wanna torch it for a few more seconds just to make sure I popped all of those air bubbles because I can still see some surfacing. And if you do have a lot of air bubbles, you probably want to torch one more time before you let your painting sit and dry, you know? I wish I had a little less paint, but there's still <clears throat> negative space. So I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm gonna do it the long way and just show you guys how beautiful. Look at those cells and lacing. And here's the big, juicy, multicolor cell. 
tops that I got. I mean, just look at this. It is absolutely gorgeous. Look at those sails. I'm really loving the color palette in this one. And I really love the big juicy sails that I got. <laughs> like, they're so cool. Look at that. It's like a river. So beautiful. Another tip I wanted to share with you all is to make sure you're cleaning your canvas up underneath for drips. Um, as the painting dries and settles down um, and levels out, it will continue to drip. So um, I would say do this at least two to three times before you let your painting just sit where it um, is going to be drying. And just keep cleaning your um, cleaning up underneath your canvas for drips. That'll help out as well, so that the painting doesn't continue to move and stretch out um, and mess up your composi composition as it levels out. But thank you all for watching this video. And if you did enjoy this video, video, please leave me a comment and um, like this video and share it with someone who will be interested in acrylic paint pouring. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a great evening and stay creative.